Hello, and welcome to Through the Monocle. Today, we will be discussing Pulp Fiction from 1994. As always, I'm your host, Grant Ingram, and two hours, 35 minutes, and 26 seconds into this recording, I am joined today by the Marcellus Wallace to my butch. It is Grant Skillen. How are you doing, Grant? I'm here. Did you enjoy your time with Dwight Howard? <sighs> no, no, he did not. Allegedly. Allegedly, he did not. All right. Mm -hmm. So, Grant, you just set through Pulp Fiction. Give me some general thoughts. So my, my primary thought is just there's not a story there are four five stories something like each chapter is its own story but i but it it's just like the stuff connects but it's like what gets accomplished ultimately they get the briefcase butch gets his money um and escapes uh marcellus wallace's wife gets taken out on the date that isn't a date and survives and yeah that's it yeah, so nothing happened you have two and a half hours of building to diddly squat <laughs> no it built to that final scene but it really didn't it's, build each individual it's a, story it's a resolved. funny it's a funny movie don't get me wrong but in terms of like the story it's like what is it? <laughs> what do you mean? It's just you have a bunch of different stuff that happens and it comes back to the beginning, but it's at the end of it, you go, I just watched a bunch of stuff and I don't know what just happened. Well, they got the briefcase. They completed their mission. Which we don't know what it is. Yeah, we don't know what the briefcase was. There, there are people who have come up with some theories, the biggest one being it's Marcellus Wallace's soul. Uh, as evidenced by the band-aid on the back of his neck in the first time the first time we see him um that somehow that was his soul being removed i don't know um but yeah we don't know what's in the briefcase but that's what they were sent out to do um they accomplished that but like it was also yeah. about honey bunny and uh ringo yeah, but you get a whole bunch of build up before it, and then you get a whole bunch after, and it's just like, okay, I, it, it's, it's, do you get the different pieces? But it's like, I almost get the sense, like, like don't get me wrong, it's a funny movie. Obviously, I laughed at it, but it's like, just, I don't know. I think it would make more to, sense to you if you mentally put it in order. There used to be a chronological version of it. It got taken down pretty quickly. So if you put it in order, it starts off with Jules and Vincent going to Brett's to get the case. Mm -hmm. They get the case. Then they get shot at. Then they shoot Marvin. Then they go to the diner. Mm -hmm. After that, they go to Marcellus's bar to deliver the case. Mm -hmm. And then the Bruce Willis storyline happens yeah and then vincent well wait not all of the bruce willis storyline some of it because vincent takes out marcellus's wife before he dies so mm -hmm. rather they go to the bar we set up the vincent story or the bruce or the bruce willis storyline then vincent takes out mia wallace Mm -hmm. All of that happens. And then the, the Bruce Willis stuff happens. Mm -hmm. Which makes the Bruce Willis stuff the true climax of the movie. It is the last thing to happen. Yeah, but it barely connects. And the reason it connects is because he kills him. Otherwise, mm -hmm. there's like there's the little bit of overlap of the mob wants him because he didn't go with the fixed fight. Then it kills the guy. But it's just... I, it just doesn't feel like a complete coherent story. Like it doesn't go from point A to point B. And I know it's not like put in order, but even the, when you put it out the way you do, like in that order, it's like, I just still don't, 
it's it's a funny movie. The jokes are great. There's a lot of great moments, but I think it lacks in the story. Interesting, because I I always found the stories to be great. I think that's I think that because, might also be part of the disconnect. There are three. But like, you said the main thing is the briefcase, and it's okay. They go get the briefcase. They kill the guy. They take it back to him. That's it. Then you get the Bruce Willis stuff, which is after where he kills him, and it's that, and it's connected in some ways, but it's also like you just see the same character. Well, each of the three Howard stories is. are distinct, even though there is very little, there's a little bit of character overlap. They are three yeah. distinct stories. So they go from yeah. point A to point B to another point A to point B to another point yeah. A to point B. You've got three 45 minute TV shows put together in a movie that aren't coherently connected. But somehow it ties in to each other to where you get a picture of what this mob is like in L.A. <sighs> I've never seen another movie like it. That's what I like about it, personally. Yeah, that and I think that's a good thing. <laughs> I mean, man, are you really saying you didn't? You thought Pulp Fiction's story was bad? That's that's what I said. Yeah, I, that's that's you said that's, it. You said what exactly? Repeat yourself here. I said it's a funny movie. It's got great moments, but the story itself is not good. Pulp Fiction, correct? Yes. Okay, so we're gonna put that on Instagram because that's hilarious. Um, <laughs> I think you're, I mean, I get what you're saying. I understand it completely. It's like, like Goodfellas. It's like, okay, that's not for me. But it's a coherent story the whole way through. Departed, I, 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 the Departed story the whole way through. I guess I look at it more like Memento. Where it, because it's out of order. Like each of those is, are their own little story. And then it cuts all to back together into a long story. I'm trying to think back. To, well, the different Memento's the one with the magicians, right? No, Memento's the one where no. the guy's wife died and he can't remember anything for very long. I I try to remember that. I don't have a ton of memory from that episode. You you said um, you liked it, but it's the one where he's like tattooing himself to try to remember things, and it takes place out of order. And like it slowly builds, like it almost takes place backwards. Um, this one is similar, and like again, I get what you're saying. It's not one complete story about Jules and Vincent. Yeah, you've got three different forty-five-ish minute stories well, within you, a two and a half hour long movie, and I sit here at the end going, "Okay, it's funny, but what real story is there?" Well, you get so if you follow if you choose to follow a specific character, you get entire stories about that character. That's another cool thing. We see Vincent Vega pull off this heist, or not really heist, but get the briefcase, take it back, mm -hmm. go take out Marcellus Wallace's wife on a date. She ODs, save her life, and then get machine gunned down. Mm -hmm. This is all one day. So maybe the coherent story is it's like one day, or maybe I guess two days. It's not very long. Um, but we see, we see that entire lifespan, right? He dies. Mm -hmm. We see Samuel L. Jackson, get the briefcase, go take it to Marcellus and retire. Mm -hmm. So that's another story. We see Marcellus go through an arc where he gets mad at Bruce Willis and, uh, boat raced. And then that ends. We see Bruce Willis go through an arc where he decides to unfix the fight. And, then escapes. Mm -hmm. It's like it follows each of them. It follows them kind of weirdly, but like there's definitely and the the only connection is the mob. They're very loosely connected parts. Right. It's about it's about individual people. It's not about an overarching event. It's not about a thing. It's about people. Yeah, and I I would that's kind of the problem I have with it is that it's not overall one story. It's three different stories told at different times throughout one movie so you're cutting back and forth between three basically entirely different stories throughout the movie right and so it feels incoherent as it's going on as you lay it out in order it still to me is like okay what's the connection here and then it's like okay just make each thing an individual thing instead of putting the three together into the movie. But if you don't put the three together into the movie, you don't get the the movie. You you get three TV shows uh, that are, it's an anthology 
tell it's an anthology mini series at that point. Like which I think would be better because you can actually follow it. Yeah, but you can follow this. That's what I'm saying. You Much can follow easily. it. It just doesn't go from point A to point B in the two and a half hour runtime. Now, if you mm. wanted to take it that way, it does. It just takes a meander. It goes to A to Q to F to C to Z to Y to throw in another letter M. Really, it's three. If you're going with the three stories, it's three stories that all go from point A to point B. But if you're not, it goes from point A to point B with an hour and a half in the middle going from point A to point B and point A to point B. The two stories in the middle start and end in the middle. They're not out of order. The only thing that's really out of order is the very beginning where we see Honey Bunny and Ringo talking. And then that first scene with Jules and Vincent. And then the last scene with uh, Jules and Vincent and Honey Bunny and Ringo. So like the, the beginning and the end tie together. The middles tie themselves up. We just have a break between the beginning and the end. Yeah, but you're going from here to here to here, which it's, I don't know. I we can get, keep I going, but I feel I like I feel like we're just going to keep repeating the same thing. Uh, no, I, no, I definitely, I, I agree. But, I, but um, I definitely get what you're saying. Yeah, but this not the takeaway. There are definitely funny moments from it. Like, we can't repeat all the jokes, but Samuel L. Jackson is great. He is fantastic. Um, John and Travolta, yeah. the two of them together are great. Mm -hmm. I would have killed for a sequel, but uh, John Travolta dies. Spoiler alert yeah. for a 30 year old movie. And, yeah, and I've seen the scene where he said it was Marcellus. Is that his name? The guy that gets shot in the back seat? Uh, no, that wasn't Marcellus. No. Marcellus was the, the leader. The, it's uh, yeah. Marvin. Marvin. So I've been, we've been here for two, two hours and 45 minutes, um, which also makes it hard to make my thoughts coherent. It's like the movie's not coherent. Um, what was the guy's name? Sorry, I heard it. And it Marvin. In Marvin, yeah. Oh I've man, I shot before. Marvin in it's the face. So yeah, and then you get like the John Travolta with the looking around meme. Uh, yeah, it's classic. I loved them in uh, Jack Rabbit Slims, like with the the dancing and everything. I thought it was fantastic. That's one of my favorite scenes in movies. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Uma Thurman's great in the parts that she's in. Yeah. I mean, all the actors agree. It's just to me, it just comes back to I don't know. Like it's funny. You, you don't like the writing. I I like the writing with the jokes, but just the the way the story is told, I'm not a fan of. To be clear, this movie did win an Oscar for screenwriting. <laughs> just to be clear, it won an Oscar for screenwriting the year that Forrest Gump and The Shawshank Redemption came out. Mm hmm. I mean, like, the comedy is great. Like, it's a funny movie. I just, I just don't like the way the the story is put together. Fair enough. Fair enough. So, if you had to put a letter grade on it, hmm. Well, he thinks on that. I'm, I am just gonna say, I really like this. Is one of my favorites. I love mm, this. Movie. I mean, I showed it. In terms of what we normally do with the pass fail, it is a pass. Like, I'm not sitting here saying it's a bad movie. Fair enough, but, but yeah, I know I, I get what you're saying wholeheartedly. Like I completely understand. Mm -hmm. To me, like you're just docking it for what makes it great. Like that, like your favorite or your least favorite part of the movie is my favorite part of the movie. Mm hmm. I mean, the little grid I'm sitting around is somewhere around a B. Fair enough. Fair enough. So you are one of the 8%. Darn. Okay, saying it's like an 85 is not the same as saying it's an awful movie. Fair enough. No, I get what you I get what you mean. And I'm I'm with you on all of it, except again, your least favorite part of the movie is what makes it great, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Which I mean, I guess we'll just agree to disagree and be back here next week to do it again. What was your favorite line in the movie? I got to look it up because my brain is personally. I I like the uh, the back and forth my between brain is Brett. Up pulp currently. Yeah, personally, I like the back and forth between Brett and uh, Jules. The English, do you speak it? That I, that I, one's I, funny. Yeah, the uh, the chopper one was funny with all the stuff about the motorcycle. It's a chopper. Okay, well. Whose is it? Whose chopper? Uh, oh, it's Zed's. 
Who's Zed? Oh, he's dead. Don't worry about it. Zed's dead, honey. Zed's dead. I love it mm-hmm. so much. Yeah, I, I'm with you, man. I like. I I really like the movie. I completely understand what you're saying about it not being one cohesive story. I got that. Like I, mm-hmm. I'm the not. Other, disag- uh, sorry, the other my other one is after he uh, saves Marcellus. That uh, that sequence is another good one. The whole uh, what now? Yeah. yeah. What's that? I'll call a couple. <laughs> yeah, that mm-hmm. one. No, Mister, <laughs> Mister, soon to be living the rest of his short butt life in agonizing pain. Yeah, yeah. It's such a quotable movie, it, unless you're white, and then you can't quote most of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, anyway, I guess we can uh, we can kind of wrap it up then. Two hours and fifty-one minutes into this recording, at this point, yeah, I feel like this is. I feel like this is going to be a shorter review. It is currently sitting at fifteen minutes. Um. So, yeah. thank you so much for tuning in. If you've enjoyed this, be back next week. We'll be talking about another Tarantino. I believe Django Unchained was what we had mentioned, um, but it could be Kill Bill. It's going to be one of those two. Um, we'll see kind of how we feel because at some point we're gonna have to cover a four hour long movie, but we're gonna see when we feel like doing that. Um, I mean, feel like never, <laughs> okay, but want to. So, also, if, don't want to sit here for four hours. We will be heck, we might do it. Hmm. What is that mysterious ticking noise? Well, if you've enjoyed this episode. You can give us money so Grant feels better about sitting here for five hours. Um, you can do that by going to patreon.com slash the culture nerd. That helps fund giveaways and fun stuff and keep these lights on, or in my case, off. Uh, because it is expensive. This, the software we use is expensive. Like It does take a lot, and it, we really appreciate all of those of you who are patrons. As always, I've been your host, Grant Ingram. And I have been the very hated co-host Grant Skillen by Grant and by all of you uh, <laughs> because of my wonderful, always correct opinions. Thank you to each of our Patreon supporters. Thank you to Jose for the logo and Taylor for the intro. Yep. And thank you, the viewer, for joining us. If you've enjoyed this, please leave a like, subscribe. That also helps out in the future. If we do another giveaway, then you don't have to do that then. You can check out more of the culture nerd by scanning that qr code there on the left you can check out more of much talk about nothing the rest of what we do there on the right i might be dropping an episode of that this weekend haven't decided yet we'll see but without further ado catch you next week